Hello everybody, Father Bill Holzinger here from Holy Trinity Catholic Church in Beaverton, Oregon, and I want to wish you a blessed Merry Christmas. So this isn't a Friday reflection per se, though it is going out on Friday, but we have a strange weekend. We have the fourth Sunday or fourth Sunday for celebrations over the weekend, that's Saturday night and Sunday morning, where we'll be cutting out the 5-11, excuse me, the 11-15 uh, Sunday morning Mass so that we can prepare for the coming Christmas celebrations which start uh, that night, that starts Sunday night, Christmas Eve at 4, 6, and 8. There are the 8. And those are our schedules for Christmas Eve. Christmas Day will be 9 a.m. So as we come to this time, we are calling, the church is calling us to remember one of the greatest moments next to creation itself which is the incarnation of Jesus. Well, of course, he was incarnated nine months earlier, but his actual birth is celebrated on December 25th, which is not intended to be a technical, like, absolute. The actual date has varied during the times, but as I'm actually recording this, it is the winter solstice. People think that the church uh, is trying to use paganism to celebrate Christ's birth, but actually, it's, you'd say it's overtaken it because it's a perfect time. We've done this with lots of other celebrations, and in this case, Christmas is a time for us to remember that the light has overcome the darkness, and especially in the birth of Christ himself. Actual celebration of the birth, there's this wonderful story we hear in Luke, and you'll hear that at all the Masses. We're doing the readings for uh, during, let's say, during the night is what it's called. And there's lots of variations on the readings that we could do, but I think everybody wants to hear the birth narrative. And so this is a good opportunity just to make sure that everybody hears that same scripture. I'll be preaching over the weekend, uh, the Sunday, Saturday, and the Christmas uh, Masses. So pray for me. But back to my point. So this is a time to celebrate that Christ has overcome the darkness. And this is the night, the winter solstice, where there's more dark than any time in the, the year. So as I'm thinking about it, I'm now looking forward to how the how nature is actually gonna do this, that in a few uh, days, the nights get shorter and the days get longer. The rising sun comes earlier each day. And this for us as Christians is a sacramental of, what, of sorts where we look to the east, not because that's where Jerusalem is, but we look to the east because that's where the sun rises. Remember that this Christmas celebration is to remind us of Christ coming upon, dawning into our creation to be seen where only before Mary knew and Elizabeth and family, but now at the birth, everyone is now able to see and celebrate this amazing thing called the incarnation. Big word, incarnation, meaning the coming together of human flesh with God, becoming one of us, Emmanuel. As you do come to church, I want to welcome you. I don't know where you're going to Mass for Christmas, but here at Holy Trinity, I want to welcome you on behalf of our staff and all our ministries. I would encourage you to come early. I encourage you to come and pray as you do. But know that when you do come, a lot of us have an attitude of, like, I'm looking forward to getting something out of this Mass. But I want to predispose you to a different sensibility. During Christmas, we like to give gifts. And one gift I'd really like you to think about is the gift of yourself. So when you come to Mass, instead of coming there to get something out of it, which you will, first concentrate on putting something into it. That is, when you come, pray for those you may encounter, those people who will be familiar to you and those who are new to you. And if you are been away for a while, that may be a lot of people new to you, but then make it, make it known that you're here. Say hello to the persons that you're sitting next to. Make it so that this is a time of community, worshiping the Lord together for this amazing thing of Christ becoming flesh for us to celebrate that very most important event. Make yourself a gift. It's a gift-giving time. Make yourself a gift in the sense of coming to give yourself in love, to other people at Mass, to greet them, to be kind to them, be patient with them. Sometimes, you know, during this time, it's, it can be really kind of messy. People of all kinds of different walks of life will come. You may have a certain way or place you like to sit. It may be taken. But if you're prepared for that, in fact, praise God that someone is there. Someone has come, and especially if it's somebody new, that you've given your seat, if you can't sit there, for them. That is your gift of giving something over. Jesus gave himself to us, doing his Father's will to save us. 
preparing himself from that moment forward to head to the cross. For us, we know, of course, this ends in the cross and resurrection. Let us then pick up our crosses when we come, because the parking lot may be messy, it may be hard to get to places, no matter what church you're going to. But don't let that deter you. Remember that the light overshadows the darkness. Come disposed with no matter what's going to happen, that you're open to giving of yourself and love to others, maybe helping somebody out and receiving God's love in return. And I think that I mentioned this before, that's kind of the loop of grace. When we give, it loops back on us and we receive. But if all we are is in receiving mode, eventually that will run out because we're not giving. But for, my, for myself, Father Anthony, Deacon Brett, uh, our whole staff, and the parish of Holy Trinity Catholic Church, I wish you and pray for you for a blessed Christmas. And I want to close with the, the opening prayer to the Mass at night in the Missal. And I think it's, it's a wonderful prayer. You'll hear this at all the Masses. Again, this is from the, from, from the Roman Missal. And sometimes we hear these prayers and they just kind of go in one ear and out the other. So I'll uh, begin with the, what's called the Collect, and then I will end with the prayer after communion, which we often call the Closing Prayer. O God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And then finally, the concluding prayer, or the prayer after communion. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's nativity may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My friends, have a wonderful and peaceful Christmas. For a lot of us, that may not be what's happening, but I want to just encourage you that no matter what is going on, allow God to change things for you, that even despite the difficulties that may be happening, give yourself away at Christmas to just be kind and loving and, and joyful when you come, no matter where it is you're going, and just watch what happens. I'll see you at church. God bless. Bye-bye.